Welcome to the first of what will hopefully be a series of videos I'll be making for this channel on Poker Radar Chaining and Pokemon X and Y. This video will be my beginner tutorial, so it will be aimed at the very new player, but if you're in the boat of sort of being able to radar chain but you just can't do it very well, this video should still be useful. Anyone who knows of me probably knows me as the author of the Poker Radar Route Analysis document that has been floating around the Pokemon community on Twitch for the last two-ish years. The link to this will be in the description of this video, so please open it up as I'll be explaining in this video how to use it effectively to hopefully make radar chaining a lot easier and more efficient for everyone. I also have a text tutorial which is linked here if anyone wants to check that out. So these slides are from my text tutorial. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly, but you can pause the video or follow that link if you want to read what's here. Basically what the Poke Radar does is it allows you to encounter the same species of Pokemon over and over. This is referred to as chaining. You may have heard people say chain doesn't matter when talking about other shiny hunting methods, but with Radar the chain absolutely matters. Chain is everything as far as shiny odds are concerned. The ultimate goal in shiny hunting with the Poker Radar is to find a shiny patch, which is guaranteed to contain a shiny of the Pokemon you are chaining. Here's an example of what a shiny patch looks like. The odds of finding a shiny patch increase as your chain length increases and maxes out to 1 in 200 per patch at a chain of 40. So 40 is the magic number that you want to reach. Since a maximum of 5 patches can shake in each set, the odds can be as high as 5 in 200 per radar reset, which is incredibly good odds, so you can see how powerful of a shiny hunting method radar chaining can be. Alright, so what do we need before we can get started? Most importantly you need the poker radar item itself, which can only be obtained from the Sycamore Lab, which is in the South Boulevard of Lumio City after you've defeated the Elite Four. So I'm in the Sycamore Lab at the moment, so the NPC we want to talk to is on the second floor. So it's this scientist over here. Talk to him after you've defeated the Elite Four and he will give you the Poker Radar. If you've already got the Poker Radar and you talk to him, he'll give you a Pokemon of the Day to chain, but feel free to ignore that. You can also use this PC to check your most recent chain length, and it also keeps track of your record 3 highest chains. Other than the Poker Radar, the other important item you need are Repels. You will need a lot of these, so if you plan on doing a lot of radar chaining, make sure you have a decent stash. I always like to keep a stock of 999 of all three types of repels so I never have to worry about running out, but if you're chaining in one of the easier routes, having 200 super repels should be more than enough. And just like with all other forms of shiny hunting, make sure you bring enough balls. You don't want to encounter a shiny and run out of balls. One thing you don't need is the shiny charm. Personally, I don't believe the shiny charm has any effect on shiny patch odds at all, so it won't really help you for radar chaining. So what Pokemon do you need to bring with you? While you can lead with pretty much anything, I suggest your lead Pokemon is able to do the following things. Be able to KO the Pokemon in the area you are chaining in one hit, have at least 40 PP in total for those moves that can KO, and all of those moves should be 100% accurate. You never want to be attacking with any lower accuracy moves. To make things really easy, I suggest using a move that has exactly 40 PP. This can be achieved by PP maxing a move that has 25 base PP. This will make it very easy to track your chain length up to 40. For example, my Sizor here has the move Thief, which is probably the most accessible option since Thief is a TM. Some other good options are Water Gun, Bite, Karate Chop, Vine Whip, and Powder Snow. All those moves are 100% accurate and PP max to 40 PP. I'd just like to quickly mention that if you're a beginner, it's very important to play with the sound on, as listening to music and sound effects is a key part of radar chaining. I'll talk more about each of these points as we start chaining. As I just mentioned, in order to reach maximum shiny odds with a poke radar, you must encounter the same species of Pokemon 40 times in a row without breaking your chain at any point. The most common cause of chain breaks will be that a different species of Pokemon shows up. 
Unfortunately, there are a lot of other things that can break your chain as well. Here is a list of all the things that can break your chain. You can pause this video and read through this if you want, but I will be covering each of these points as I go. Last thing to talk about before we start chaining is where can the poker radar be used. You can radar chain anywhere in Kalos where there is regular tall grass, purple flowers, yellow flowers, or red flowers. You can't use the radar in very tall grass such as Route 6. You can't use it anywhere that isn't grass such as water, caves, or desert. And unfortunately the radar cannot be used in the Friend Safari. Even though the Friend Safari has regular tall grass, if you try activating the radar there, it won't work. The game won't let you use it. There are 20 radarable routes in Kalos in total, and they are all listed here in the Route Analysis document. So any route that isn't here isn't radarable. The first thing this resource is useful for is helping you to decide which route to chain. The document lists all of the radarable routes in X and Y in difficulty order in my opinion. Routes 5 and Route 7 are universally regarded as the beginner routes as they both have a very large field of grass to chain. When you have a large field of grass to work with, chains generally build much easier and much faster, so it won't be such a big deal if you break a few chains, as it won't take too long to rebuild your chains if you do. If you are a beginner, I highly recommend that you start chaining in the easier routes first, and slowly work your way up to the more difficult routes after gaining practice and confidence. You can use my difficulty scale as a guide. For this tutorial, I'm going to be chaining at Route 5. The Route Analysis document will recommend which field of grass to chain in for each route. For Route 5, we want to find this field of purple flowers and chain there. Alright, so Route 5 is east of Camp Freer Town. Gonna activate a repel now. You must always have a repel active while chaining to prevent random encounters. Any random encounters will break your chain. Alright, the field of flowers we want is right here. As you can see. Alright, so make sure the poker radar is registered to your Y button and have all other key items unregistered. Being a key item itself, the poke radar is incompatible with all other key items. If you have another key item in use, let's say the dowsing machine, the game will not let you use the radar and you'll get this message. If you're in the middle of a chain and you use another key item, your chain will instantly break. As you can see, that's on the list of things that will break our chain. You may notice that the roller skates are in your list of key items. This is a serious problem as the roller skates are always permanently registered to the circle pad. If you ever accidentally touch the circle pad when chaining, your chain will instantly break. And again, if you have the roller skates in use and try and activate the radar, the game won't let you use it. Make sure to never touch the circle pad when chaining, you must always move with the D-pad. Before you start chaining, I'd recommend saving. This is just so you can soft reset the game if you break a chain to save any lost PP and repels. There is generally no point saving mid-chain as your chain will automatically be broken if you reload the game. As you can see, turning off or soft resetting your 3DS is on the list of things that will break your chain. Before explaining how to shiny hunt with it, I'll first explain the general mechanics of the poke radar item itself. When you press the Y button and activate the poke radar while standing on a grass tile, the game will generate a set of five shaking grass patches in the 9x9 tile area around the tile you are standing, like so. Looking at the legend in the route analysis document, the green squares represent grass tiles, brown squares are anything that isn't grass, the blue square is the tile you are standing, or the tile the radar is being activated. And the pink, yellow, orange, and red squares represent the grass tiles in the spawnable area. So this is where the shaking patches can spawn. So you can think of it as the poke radar scanning this square area of grass around you, and it's identifying five patches of grass that it thinks contains a Pokemon. If there is already a set of shaking patches present, then activating the radar again will erase the previous set and generate a new set of five. 
but if you try and activate the radar again immediately, the game will tell you you're out of battery power and you'll get this message. You need to run 50 steps to recharge the radar before you can activate it again. As you can see as I'm running steps my battery level is going up. Forcing you to run the 50 steps each time is the way the game developers prevented the radar from just being spammable. The process of running 50 steps and reactivating the radar to generate a new set of patches is known as resetting the radar. You can reset the radar as many times as you want without any other consequences other than spending time in repels by running the 50 steps each time. You may have noticed that using the poker radar has changed the music. This is the poker radar music and while it is playing it means you are currently in a chain. If at any point the music reverts back to the regular route music, your chain was broken. This is probably the most important reason for new players to play with the sound on as it makes it obvious when you have broken a chain. You may notice that the shake and grass patches generated shake at varying speeds. There are three basic types of shake and grass patches which I will refer to as fast shakers, medium shakers and slow shakers. There is a fourth type as well which is the shiny patch. Fast and medium shakers will contain a Pokemon, so you will get a wild encounter if you step into one of those. Slow shakers will contain nothing and will instantly break your chain if you step into one. For example, this patch here was a slow shaker. If we step into it, we will get this message. Notice the poker radar music is now gone. That means our chain was broken. Slow shakers exist for no other purpose other than to make your life miserable. Never step into slow shakers on purpose. Making sure to not accidentally run into them whilst chaining is a necessary skill. So we need to step into one of the medium or fast shakers in order to encounter the first Pokemon of our chain. The first encounter is always random and it's based on the encounter table of the route you are in. Alright, so this patch is a medium shaker, so we'll take that. Alright, so we've got a Dodo. If this is a Pokemon you are interested in shiny hunting, you want to KO it to continue your chain. Otherwise, you can run from the encounters to break your chain and keep looking. I'm going to run from this Dodo to demonstrate that. Again, since the music is back to the regular route music, it means our chain is broken. So running from encounter is on the list, so you must KO or catch each Pokemon in order to continue your chain. Alternatively, you can soft reset your 3DS if it's a Pokemon you don't want instead of running if you think that's easier. Either option is fine, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll chain this Skiddo. I want to use Thief to KO it. After KOing or catching a Pokemon during your chain, your chain will continue and the radar will automatically activate after the encounter. So get ready to pay attention to the grass shakes. Alright, so now we are at a chain of one for Skiddo. Now that we are actually chaining a Pokemon, we need to be mindful about which shaking patches we step into in order to reliably continue our chain. Now there is a difference between fast shakers and medium shakers, which is, quite simply, that fast shakers have a high probability of containing the chain Pokemon, and medium shakers have a low probability of containing the chain Pokemon. Medium shakers are actually so risky that you never want to step into them on purpose, ever. When building your chain, only step into fast shakers. Avoid all of the slower shaking grass. Shaking grass type is the most important factor when choosing patches to build your chain. The other factor that is important is where the patch spawns relative to where the radar is activated. You would have noticed that my diagram split up the 9x9 tile spawnable area into four different colored zones. I will be referring to these as the one zone, the 2 zone, the 3 zone, and the 4 zone. So the 1 zone consists of 8 tiles represented by the pink squares, 
The two zone consists of 16 tiles represented by the yellow squares. The three zone consists of 24 tiles represented by the orange squares. And the four zone consists of 32 tiles represented by the red squares. These zones are relevant for two reasons. Firstly, where the patches spawn is not completely random and it is based on these zones. More importantly, the odds that a fast shaker has of containing the chained Pokemon depends on which zone it spawns in. A fast shaker that spawns in the 4 zone has the highest probability of containing the chained Pokemon. If it's in the orange, the probability is a little bit lower. If it's in the yellow, the probability is lower again. And the fast shakers that spawn right next to you in the 1 zone are pretty risky. So with all of that in mind, I'm going to reset the radar at this tile and we're going to be looking for a patch that is both fast shaking and is in the 4 zone, as in it is on one of these red tiles. Did you see it? It was right here. That was a fast shaker and it was in the 4 zone. It was on that tile right there. So this patch should be ideal. This should be a Skiddo. And it is. So this is our second Skiddo, so we are now on a chain of two. The next thing to discuss is about resetting the radar when building your chain, which is probably the most important aspect of radar chaining in my opinion. And if you're gonna only take one thing from this video, let it be this. It is very important not to get in the habit of just resetting the radar at random tiles without thinking about it. This is a very bad habit and will make the overall chaining process much more difficult for yourself than it needs to be. And if you are already in that habit, you wanna try and break it immediately. It is important to think about where the patches will be spawning relative to the tile you are standing. This is a bit of a difficult thing to explain, you kind of need to get a feel for it by playing, and I will have an entire video dedicated to resetting the radar optimally. But if you're a beginner, what I highly recommend doing to start with is to pick one tile, and when you need to reset the radar, reset at that tile as much as practically possible. This will make the overall chaining process way simpler and more efficient. For each route, the route analysis document will recommend optimal tiles to reset your radar when building your chain. So if you don't know how to figure out what an optimal tile is to reset for yourself, you can just follow this. We were going to be using this as our reset tile for the rest of this video. Once you have picked your reset tile, what you want to do next is memorize where the ideal patches will be spawning. As I've mentioned, fast shakers that spawn in the 4 zone have the highest probability of containing the chain Pokemon, so we need to know where the 4 zone is relative to our reset tile. And if you're using the document, you can just follow this diagram. So when we reset at this tile, the patches we will be looking to shake are one tile away from the left edge along here, as well as ones that are one tile away from the top edge, and this patch here. The patches that are right on the edges of the field of grass are actually not quite as safe as the enclosed patches, and I'll talk about edge patches in a bit, but for now we're going to avoid them. So these patches should be the main focus of your attention every time you reset the radar. You want to prioritize your eyes on this sort of upside down L shape that is one tile away from the top edge and the left edge. We are looking for a fast shaker to spawn on one of those tiles, as well as a clear path to get to it. Okay, this patch here was a fast shaker. It was one tile from the top edge, so this is ideal. So that was on this tile right here. After KOing the Skiddo and the Grass Shakes after the encounter, our main priority will be looking for a clear path back to our reset tile. All right, back we go. Reset here. 
So the four was here, it was a medium shaker and it was on an edge, so we definitely want to avoid that. I will probably refer to the four zone patch as simply the four most of the time, and I'm using the word the quite literally. I briefly mentioned earlier that the way the five patches spawn is not completely random and it is based on zones. It happens that exactly one of the five always generates in the four zone. So when we reset the radar at this tile, exactly one of these 32 red patches will always shake. So that time it shook here. Uh, that was a medium shaker, so we definitely want to avoid that. This patch was good, that was a fast shake at that time, and that was right on this tile. So chaining like this is very simple and effective, since you will always know exactly where to look for ideal patches, you don't need to worry about counting steps, and it'll be much less likely for you to miss a good patch when one spawns. So I'm keeping track of my chain length with my Thief PP. So after KOing the Skiddo, I would have used Thief five times, so we are currently at a five chain. When our Thief PP hit zero, we would have KO'd 40 Skiddos and we'll be at a 40 chain. This patch is good. I want to make it very clear that this particular diagram for Route 5 will only apply if you reset at this tile. The spawnable area moves as your reset tile changes. And you'll notice I have a diagram in the bottom right corner of this video which changes every time the radar activates and it's going to change right now after this encounter as you would have just seen. And if I like reset down here for example, You'll notice that the spawnable area has now moved, such that the patches next to the top edge and the left edge are now outside of the spawnable area entirely. Anyway, hopefully that diagram being there will make this somewhat clear. Whenever I explain radar, I'm always trying to get people to think about their reset tile, so if you can get your head around this, I think you'll find radar will start making a whole lot more sense. I could tell that there was no fast shakers in that set just from the sound. So there are three basic types of shaking patches, and with them there are three different shake sound effects, and what you heard there was the medium shaker sound effect, which sounds pretty soft. If you hear that you can be sure that there were no fast shakers present. So you can use the sounds of the grass shakes to help you out a bit as well. And this is another reason why it is recommended to play with the sound on. Again, uh... No fast shakers in that set, sounded very soft. That's the fast shaker sound effect, so that means there is at least one fast shaker present in that set. Uh, the four it was actually down here and it was a medium shaker and on an edge, so we're going to avoid that. And remember, there's no penalty for resetting the radar. You can reset the radar as many times as you want until an ideal patch spawns. Uh, the four was down here. It was a fast shaker, but we're going to avoid the edges for now. This patch was good. That was a fast shaker, and that was here. If your chain breaks at any point, like if the wrong Pokemon shows up, or you lose the Poker Radar music for whatever other reason, the best thing to do is just soft reset your 3DS, assuming you save beforehand. This will save any lost repels or PP that you had used. Then you have to start the chaining process again, starting from zero. So even though the game always generates five patches in each set, you will often see less than five shaking. Like here we only saw three patches shaking. This can happen if part of the spawnable area falls outside of the field of grass and some patches have tried to generate where there is no grass. And if you look at the diagram in the bottom right at the moment, you'll see that the spawnable area here is like kind of cut off. But this will be, become more relevant when I start talking about edge patches.
If an ideal patch spawns after an encounter, ideally you don't want to ignore it. If you saw a Far Shaker that you thought was a 4 but you weren't sure, you can make sure by walking 4 steps towards it in one direction, as in 1, 2, 3, 4. After walking those 4 steps and you are standing in the same column or row as the patch, you can be sure that it was a 4. So I walked 4 steps left and I'm standing in the same column as this patch here, so this patch was a 4. So you can use this diagram to sort of make sense of that in your head. In order to get from the red area from the blue tile, you would need to walk either 4 steps up, down, left, or right. For example, if a patch spawned three steps up, three steps right, sure it took you six steps to get there and it looks pretty far away, but it's in the orange so it's only a three and is therefore less than ideal. Remember, how many individual steps it takes you to get to a patch isn't relevant. What's important is what zone it spawns in. I generally try not to talk in terms of steps too much as it causes a lot of confusion. All of my radar resources use diagrams and explain things in terms of zones, which I think makes things a lot clearer. Time to talk about edge patches. Alright, so the four was here and it was a fast shaker, so it has the highest possible probability of containing the chain Pokemon. So this should be a Skiddo. And it is. However, since this patch was on the very edge of the field of grass, it is less than ideal. If you read through the list of what breaks your chain, you would have noticed this point. It says, no patches of grass shake when the Procreator was activated. This is rare, and it is only possible if the Procreator was activated on an edge patch. As I've mentioned, five patches always generate when you activate the radar, but you will often see less than five shaking if some spawn outside of the field of grass. If the radar is activated right on the edge, now so much of the spawnable area falls outside of the field of grass that it is actually possible that all five will generate outside. And if that happens, no grass will shake and your chain will just break. So if an edge patch breaks your chain, this will happen after the encounter when the radar automatically activates. So I'm going to KO this Skiddo and we'll look at how many patches shake after the encounter. Alright, so we've got three patches shaking, so our chain is still good. You only need one patch to shake to keep your chain going. Your chain only breaks if zero shake. Here's an example of what an edge patch chain break would look like. It is generally very likely that at least one patch will shake, therefore chamber breaks like this are pretty rare, meaning edge patches aren't really that risky. If you are new to radar and chaining in the easy routes, I'd say it's perfectly fine to avoid edge patches entirely. If you are chaining in the more difficult routes, edge patches will be practically unavoidable and you will have to risk them in order to build your chain at a reasonable rate. And for the same reason, manually resetting the radar on edges will also risk breaking your chain. So there, two patches shook there, but if we got zero, our chain would have broken. And here's an example of what that would look like. So yeah, don't reset the radar on edges like this. There is very rarely any good reason to do that, and it will just risk breaking a chain. As long as there are eight grass tiles directly adjacent to you when you activate the radar, i.e. the entire one zone falls on grass, it is not possible for your chain to break in this way. So like resetting here for example would be fine. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about edge patches in this video. There's actually a lot more I have to say about this topic and I will have an entire video explaining edge patches in greater depth, so check that out to learn more. So the 4 was a medium shaker, so we don't want to take that. The fast shaker here spawned on this tile. 
It's in the orange, so it's a three. I'm gonna take this patch. Three zone far shakers like this are less than ideal, but they do still have a very decent chance of containing the chain Pokemon, but the odds are a bit lower. So you can take a few of them when building your chain if you're okay with taking some risks. Keep in mind, if you take too many threes, one of them is bound to break your chain at some point. Uh, one, two, three, four. This patch was a four. And the same thing goes with edge patches. While edge patch chain breaks are rare, if you take a lot of edges, one is probably going to break your chain at some point. As a kind of rough risk analysis in order of safest to most risky, four zone fast shakers are your safest option. A four zone fast shaker that is on an edge is generally your second safest option, although it does depend. Then three zone fast shakers, then three zone edges, and a similar trend for the one and two zone fast shakers. Stepping into medium shakers is always the worst kind of risk. You are better off taking a one zone fast shaker than a four zone medium shaker. So that's a pretty general risk analysis of all your options. You would need to take edge patch safety into consideration to make a more accurate assessment. But I want to make it very clear that shaking grass type is always the most important factor. Uh, one, two, three, four. And if you are having trouble telling the difference between the fast shakers and the medium shakers, here's a tip that may help with that. The four zone patch in particular is a bit special that it can never spawn as a slow shaker. So if you pay attention to the fours, there are really only two different shaking patch types to learn. Like this patch right here. This is your medium shaker. Since it was a four, you know it can't be a slow shaker. So you can use this as a frame of reference. This is what the second fastest shake type looks like. So as long as the patch shook more than that, it was a fast shaker. And you may think that that grass shake looked pretty weak. And this is why I think the purple flowers are the easiest to chain in, because the medium shakers and purple flowers are really slow looking, so it's really easy to tell the difference. In the other types of grass flowers, it is a bit more difficult to tell between them, but it is still very noticeable. The main challenge is to actually get a nice direct look at the patch you want to step into. The grass shake animation only lasts for 30 frames, which is one second. And you need to get a nice direct look at the patch in this time, as well as look for a clear path to get to it. If it was in your peripheral, you're probably not going to be sure whether it was a fast shake or not. But if you did get a direct look, there really should be no question, and try not to doubt yourself too much. You want to step into patches with a bit of confidence. And looking for the grass shakes will get easier as you practice more. And practice is really key with radar chaining. When you first start out, your chaining will probably be kind of rough and inefficient. You might be a bit slow with running the 50 steps. You might miss a lot of good patches and you'll make some mistakes like accidentally running into slow shakers. But as you practice more, your chaining will be smoother and everything will become much easier. And once they've spent the time to learn and practice radar chaining, most people seem to really enjoy it, and it's a nice change from other shiny hunting methods. By the way, leaving the field of grass like this is fine and won't break your chain. As you can see, leaving the grass isn't on the list. What will break your chain is leaving the route entirely, and there is also a limit to how far away you can walk before your chain breaks. But it doesn't matter where you go, as long as you don't leave the route, or walk too far away. Some other things that don't break your chain are closing the lid of your 3DS, so take advantage of that if you need to take a break mid-chain. But remember, you can't turn off your 3DS. Running into Articuno, Zapdos, or Moltres actually won't break your chain, because I guess they don't really count as an encounter, so don't panic if one of the birds shows up. And other than using key items, anything else menu related is absolutely fine. You can use regular items, you can switch your party Pokemon around, you can use super training, anything in the PSS is fine, so you can use O powers. You can also connect to the internet and do some wonder trades or something if you want to, and if you come back, your chain will still be fine. I've been saying that four zone fast shakers have the highest probability of containing the chain Pokemon. And while the odds are very high, 
it is not 100%. Your chains will occasionally break due to the wrong species of Pokemon showing up in an ideal patch. And if you radar chain a lot, it will happen a lot. So if you want to shiny hunt with a Poker Radar, you have to accept that as an inevitable fact. That sometimes chains will just break even though you did nothing wrong. But understand, if there was a way to 100% guarantee 40 chains every attempt, it would probably make radar shinies far too easy to get, and shinies are supposed to be rare. As shiny hunters, we are always at the complete mercy of the RNG, and radar chaining is no exception to that. And it's common to hear people talk about radar in terms of right and wrong patches. Like, for example, someone might step into a patch and a different species of Pokemon shows up and they'll be like, oh, I guess that was the wrong patch. But no. If you are thinking like that, you have entirely the wrong idea. That is not at all how radar works. You need to think about it in terms of probabilities. Radar is all RNG and probabilities. No patch is 100%. And unless it's a slow shaker, no patch is 0% either. Every patch you step into just has a certain probability of containing the chain Pokemon. And what we are really doing when radar chaining is trying to skew those probabilities in our favor as much as possible. So you could just keep stepping into the first fast shakers you see every time. And yes, the correct species of Pokemon will be showing up more often than not but you will find it very difficult to reliably make it to 40 if you do that. In order to build chains reliably and reliably make it all the way to 40, you really need to take the 4 zone patch the most often. And it's perfectly okay to break a few chains. Broken chains are inevitable and it's not always practical to play ultra safe to try and minimize broken chains either. Being good at radar isn't about never breaking chains. I break loads of chains. In my opinion, being good at radar is about applying good strategy and resetting the radar as optimally as possible, ideally never missing good patches when they spawn, taking calculated risks based on your chain length and the difficulty of the route you are chaining, and probably most importantly, having the patience to keep going even after breaking a few chains. A lot of people really struggle to apply the same level of patience to radar chaining as other shiny hunting methods, even though radar hunts should generally be shorter on average than most methods. This is probably due to the fact that radar is more execution based and that breaking chains can be rage inducing and really wears on your patience fast. But just like with all other forms of shiny hunting, you have to maintain your patience otherwise you will never get any shinies. And it's fine to take breaks if you need to, but try not to give up on your radar hunts. If you can maintain your patience and do everything else I just mentioned, you should be able to find radar shinies more reliably than most other shiny hunting methods, even if you break a few chains in the process. I've continued with this chain and we are now at 39, so we only need to chain one more encounter to reach max shiny odds. Obviously you want to play more carefully at high chains since you don't want to mess it up now after making it this far. So we definitely don't want to take any risks for this last encounter, but this patch here was a 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this patch should be ideal. So this should be 40. Alright, here's our 40th Skiddo. As you can see, our Thief PP is now 0. Okay, so once you are at a 40 chain, there is no need to chain any more encounters as your shiny odds are now maximized. You can chain more encounters if you want, but your shiny odds will not get any better. So all we should be doing now is resetting the radar over and over until we find a shiny patch. At a chain of 40, your shiny patch odds will be 1 in 200 per patch that spawns. The odds per reset, however, will depend entirely on where you are resetting. If you look at the route analysis document, for each route there will be a recommended reset tile for building chains, but there will also be a recommended reset tile for shiny patch, so reset there to maximize your odds. For route 5 you will notice that both of the recommended tiles are the same, 
So there's no need to change our reset tile at Route 5, since resetting here already puts the entire spawnable area onto grass, so the shiny patch odds will be the maximum 5 in 200 or 1 in 40 for each reset. So the odds are extremely good, so re resetting really shouldn't take that long. But sometimes the RNG will just hate you and you'll go way over odds for your shiny patch. One last radar mechanic I haven't talked about yet is what is known as fast music. While radar chaining, the poker radar music will randomly sometimes change to a much faster sounding tune. During the time that fast music plays, your shiny patch odds will be maximized like you were at a 40 chain. Here's an example of what fast music sounds like. Here's what it might look like if you were lucky enough to get a fast music shiny patch. Fast music shows up completely randomly and lasts a random number of resets. Fast music shiny patches are nice when they happen, but because fast music is so random and unpredictable, you really can't expect to reliably get many shinies that way. If you do get fast music during your chain and want to maximize your chance of getting a shiny patch, what you should do is, I'm just going to use Route 2 as an example here, what you should do is stop entering any patches, switch your reset tile to the one that maximizes shiny patch odds, and keep resetting there until fast music ends. And listening for fast music is another reason why it's important to play with the volume up. And another reason is to listen for shiny patches. As I reset for our 40 chain shiny patch, I'm going to be both looking and listening for it as a shiny patch makes a very distinct unmissable sound effect when spawned. And here's our shiny patch. The sparkles always appear a bit lower than the patch itself, so the patch just above the sparkles is our shiny patch. I always like to activate Capture Power level 3 before stepping into the shiny patch. Just to make the shiny a bit easier to catch. And here's our successfully chained shiny skiddo. Hopefully we can get it in one bowl. Alright, we got it. So after catching a shiny, the chain will continue, however the shiny odds will reset back to base odds. You can keep chaining if you want, but in order to reach max shiny odds again and try to get a second shiny skiddo, we would need to chain another 40 encounters. Since we are currently at a 41 chain, we would need to build our chain to 81 to reach max shiny odds again. The good news is that, other than a broken chain, catching a shiny is the only thing that resets shiny odds. Spawning a shiny patch or encountering a shiny does not reset your shiny odds. So for example, if you accidentally fail a shiny patch or KO a shiny at a 40 chain, as long as your chain didn't break, your shiny odds will still be fine and you can keep resetting for another shiny patch. And that will conclude my beginner tutorial. I have a lot more to say on the subject of radar chaining and I will have some shorter, more in-depth tutorials covering individual aspects, so please check those out if you are interested in learning more. I also plan to have an example chain video for every radarable route in Kalos. There is a common opinion that the poke radar is only really usable in a few routes in X and Y. That is not true at all. I myself have multiple 40 chain radar shinies from every single radarable route in Kalos. It is absolutely possible to chain everywhere, you just need patience, a bit of luck, and the right strategy. I will be explaining my strategies for chaining in each route in those videos. Thanks for watching and good luck with your radar hunts.